Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Now a few days ago I uploaded a video showing how I made this DIY electric longboard and I had a number of questions and comments uh, below the video that people wanted some more information so I just thought I'd do a, a follow-up video here and address some of those questions that people had. And like some of my previous Q&A videos, anyone whose question that I answered in this video, I'll be sending you a free copy of one of my books. So make sure you guys watch the whole video here and see if your comments made it into the video. The first question is from Jack Wagner who asked, how much did this DIY electric longboard cost to make? Now in the beginning of my last video, I showed you guys all the parts that I was gonna use to build this longboard. And I got all of these parts except for the longboard deck from my website, uh, electricskateboardparts.com. And full disclosure, again, this is my website, I own it. Um, that funny looking guy is me. Um, so just, you know, <laughs> FYI. Anyways, the parts that I used were the basic kit, and this is a kit that includes all of the parts used uh, for the mechanical components. That's the wheels, the trucks, the motors, the speed controller, uh, the remote, basically everything besides the battery. So the entire power system mechanical kit costs $399. In addition to that, I used the Samsung 25R battery, and that's a 10S2P battery, and that cost $199. So the short answer to this question is that it cost $598 uh, for all the components outside of the longboard itself, where if you already have a longboard, you can just you know, use that longboard. Um, but you can build this a number of different ways. There's also, um, you know, there's uh, bigger batteries on the website as well. You can go all the way up to 10S3P with the Samsung 30Q battery. Or there's a smaller battery if you only need uh, you know, a little bit of range, um, which is the 10S1P Samsung 25R battery. Now that one, it, it's really good for sort of the last mile situation. Um, you know, it'll probably get you uh, four to five miles maybe, but um, it's not going to be a long distance battery. So that's really for um, lower powered or uh, short distance uh, electric longboards. Now, if you were to use that 10S1P battery, that would drop the price of everything here down to about 518. And if you compare that to different things in the market, I think it's actually pretty reasonable. Now, this is a 1600 watt longboard. So if you compare that to like a 2000 or 2200 watt boosted board, which costs, I don't even remember, I think it's something like $1,400 now. Maybe it's, maybe it's less than that. It's about a little more than a third of the price, um, but it's got almost as much power as a boosted board. And it allows you to choose the exact components you want. There are cheaper electric skateboards and electric longboards out there. You know, you can buy an, uh, a decent electric longboard for, uh, I think like the Meepo's, what, like 400 bucks now or something. But um, for me, you know, it's having that extra power and the extra range over boards like that that I just prefer. And then, of course, the ability to, to build it yourself. You know, I'm very much a DIY guy. Now, you can also buy these components individually on the website. You know, if you just want the motors, or you just want the trucks, or you just want the dual speed controller, you can get all those components individually. But it uh, makes more sense to buy it as the complete kit because it's less expensive that way. There's a discount if you get all the parts together. The next question is from Al Ringding, who asked about the range of this longboard. So I haven't done a complete discharge test yet, but based on the maximum uh, discharges that I've done, uh, and the amount of distance I've gone, the range seems to be on this setup about 16 kilometers or about 10 miles or so um, while I'm riding it pretty hard. If I were to ease up a little bit and ride it a little slower, it would obviously go further because the faster you go, the more power you're using. But um, you know, for some decently hard riding, I was getting ranges of about 10 miles or 16 kilometers. Next, Joel F. asked how fast this longboard goes. Now in the beginner mode, because there's two modes uh, in this remote and controller, the beginner mode goes about 19 miles an hour and the advanced mode goes about 26 or 27 miles an hour. Now I generally keep it in the beginner mode because going like 19 or 20 miles an hour is you know, perfectly good for me. Getting up over that, I start to get into the speed wobbles a little bit. And so you know, 19, 20 miles an hour, that's, that's sort of my sweet spot for where I like to cruise at. Uh, but you can go faster, you know, just pop it into the advanced mode, though it will use more power that way. Elwin Alvarado asked if you can change out the polyurethane wheels, and you definitely can. Uh, the hub motors back here, basically there's just six bolts here, or six screws rather. You just unscrew those and you can slip the uh, polyurethane wheels right off. Um, we will be stocking those on electricskateboardparts.com. We don't have them there yet. Uh, we just have the replacement wheels for the front, but we will be getting in soon the replacement wheels for the motors. Um, I've been riding this one around, uh, well not this one because I just built it, but the last one I had before this I've been riding around for 
I think like two or three months and there's very little wear on the, the polyurethane wheels. So I don't think you'll be needing to replace those very quickly, but we will have those up there soon. So if you do need some you know, replacement wheel covers, you can slide those suckers on. Musterman was wondering if 1600 watts is too much power and if the board would just like shoot out from under you. Personally, I haven't found that to be the case. I think 600 watts, again, it's sort of in that sweet spot, at least for me, where um, it's not so powerful that the board feels unmanageable. You know, it definitely feels like I'm in, in full control all the time, but it's got enough power to really be fun and, and get you going. Uh, I also have a 480-watt uh, board, but it really just feels more like a toy. You know, you push the throttle, and it, it doesn't really go. You know, it takes a second, and it kind of lugs. But this one, it just it, it takes off, but not so much that it feels like it's going to throw you off. Here, let me, let me give you an indication. All right, so I'm just gonna do basically a launch test from uh, almost stopped. I'll, you know, roll a little bit and start, and I'll just do full throttle and see how it goes. So basically it's got a nice, you know, pretty strong push right off the line, but it's not so strong that it feels like it's going to shoot out from under you. You know, it still feels like you're in control of it the whole time. So, you know, 1600 watts of power, it's a nice amount of power, but it's not too much in my opinion. Now Nexitech wants to see an onboard test drive to see the 1600 watts in action. Um, I've never really done that before, I can give it a shot. Um, not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. Not really one of those YouTubers that rides around and talks to the camera. Am I supposed to tell you about my day? Is that what we do here? I'm trying not to die. All right, and PL asked if you could do front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Theoretically, you could do both. I don't really see front wheel drive out there. I mean, you could install these motors on the front um, and you could do it that way. But I think it'd feel a little weird having that extra weight up in the front of the board. And also, if you have a kicktail, it'd make it harder to lift the front up because it'd be so heavy. Um, but all-wheel drive, it's definitely a possibility. You would just, um, you know, you'd get two sets of the hub motors, and instead of getting the front and rear trucks, you'd get two sets of the rear trucks. And then you just combine the dual ESCs, where uh, already those two halves of the, of the dual ESC, they're connected so that the uh, remote controls both of them. You just bridge that uh, between the two duals. So you'd have four ESCs basically controlled by one remote. So, you know, four-wheel drive is also definitely a possibility. All right, those are all the questions for now. Thank you guys very much for submitting your questions. Anyone who I answered your question today, um, send me a private message here on YouTube. You can um, get my contact information on my channel page. And um, I guess I'll still do a random uh, drawing from a commenter from the last video, because I do that at the end of every video. So the randomly chosen commenter from the last video is... C. Klaus. So congratulations, uh, C. Send me your address where you'd like me to uh, send your book to and also everyone let me know if you were featured in this video let me know which one of my books you would like either uh, the ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guide um, DIY lithium batteries if you want to build your own lithium batteries or DIY solar power if you're into solar power uh, thank you guys for watching let's see uh, last thing anyone who's following the progress on our v2 high power Vruzen battery kits uh, we're really seriously dangerously close to uh, debuting these. I know I've been saying that for a while, but this time I think we're within, uh, we're probably within seven to 10 days of, of opening it up, revealing all the specs and opening up the first orders. Uh, if we can get it in the next week, then my next video will be announcing that. Um, as of now, we're finished with the prototypes. The latest tests are showing that we're probably going to rate them at uh, 20 amps continuous. We've actually tested them at higher. Uh, we've tested them up to 25 amps. They've been performing well, but um, we're probably going to list them a little conservatively at 20 amps just because we don't want to be like the rest of the battery industry and find out what the absolute like danger limit is and back off a tiny bit and call that the rating. But we think 20 amps is definitely, uh, 20 amps per cell that is, is definitely going to be um, uh, able to open a lot of doors for you guys that want to build higher power batteries or that need smaller parallel groups. So that is coming. Hopefully it's my next video if we can get it done in the next week. Uh, if not, it'll probably be the video after the next video. And we're real excited to get that out for you guys. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, guys. See you next time.